Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to reduce grain in Adobe After Effects without any plugins. So basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting in Premiere with a foot, a piece of footage that has a lot of grain in it, and we're going to be sending that to After Effects, fixing it, and then bringing it back. Also, that we can keep it in the Premiere Pro workflow, which is what we'd normally be doing. We wouldn't be editing in After Effects. We'd just be doing things that like little fixes like this. So we have this shot right here. And you'll notice that we have a lot of grain. Look on the dark regions right here, and even into the main shot, there's just grain everywhere, around the edges, around the black, even in the center where it's lit up. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing it to After Effects, and we're going to be creating something that looks a little something like this. And you'll notice that there is a whole lot less grain in it. It looks a lot clearer, a lot smoother. There is still a little bit of grain here and there, and that's just something that's unavoidable unless you film it again. But we have reduced it, and we've made it usable, we've made it look a lot better through After Effects. So let's get started. If you are starting in Premiere Pro, all you have to do is find the piece of footage that you want to send to After Effects, right click on it, and then go to replace with After Effects composition. And you'll notice that After Effects has started up and it said, do you want to save this project? Because you have to save it when you want to do this. So we'll just name it Reduce Grain. And what it has done, it has imported that piece of footage from Premiere Pro and replaced it with an After Effects composition right here. So now we are in After Effects and we can begin reducing the grain. You'll notice After Effects works a little bit differently in the fact that uh, the rendering will be a little bit slower, and especially when we add this, it'll take a little bit of time to do some of the rendering, and it won't play in full uh, speed. But to get the effect started, all we have to do is go to Effects and Presets over here on the right, and what we want to do is we want to search for an effect called Remove Grain. It's under Noise and Grain. We're going to drag that onto our footage right here. And you'll notice that we have this box. And the reason it gives you a box instead of just doing the entire preview is because this is a graphics and processor intense process. So it wants you to be able to play back your footage and to notice the difference and manipulate things in there. However, if you want to see the entire piece, all you have to do is go over to the remove grain. So make sure your clip is selected. Make sure you're in effect controls, remove grain and then go to Final Output. And now it's going to render out the entire frame. And you already can notice that there's a big difference, especially if we zoom in uh, right on this toe symbol right here. You can notice that there has been a reduction in the grain. And you'll also notice that we've lost a little bit of detail. That is something that comes when you reduce grain. It gets just a touch blurrier. I don't want to say blurrier. I would call it smoother. It smooths out the edges a little bit, and you do lose some of that detail. However, in a grand scope, it doesn't change that much. You still get a pretty good shot. And maybe we should go into a, sort of a more in-focus shot right here, and you can notice the difference really, really well. Look right around this symbol again. And you notice that the grain is greatly reduced already. Now, we can fine-tune this selection. Uh, one of the best things to do is go down to Temporal Filtering and enable that. What this does is right now it's taking it frame by frame. So it's taking one frame, looking at it, going, hey, this is how we're going to reduce it. Goes to the next frame, does that again. The problem with this is it can actually create this blocky artifacting where one, because the grain is jumping back and forth, the corrections are jumping back and forth, and it can make it look, like I said, blocky. So to fix that, what you can do is go in here into Temporal Filtering, this right here, and click Enabling. What this does is it allows you to, uh, or it allows the program to blend frames together. So it'll look at, let's say, frame three, and at frame three, it'll go back two frames and forward two frames and say, what's the grain on all of these, and then it'll smooth it out across all five of those frames, and it'll keep doing that, uh, sort of going five frames at a time, overlapping and blending them all together. This makes it so that the grain reduction is smoother, and it, it reduces those blocky artifacting. Now, this can introduce another layer of artifacting in which it'll actually make it look almost pastel color, where it looks like it's drawing lines onto it. And that can that works or that happens a lot if you have like really sharp lines somewhere. Um, but easiest way to fix that is just to bring this up to about 0 0.98, 0 0.97. Uh, this just reduces the amount of the temporal filtering and it helps smooth out the image. I usually always bring this to 0 0.97. I think it always looks better if you turn this on and bring this to 0.97. Uh, if you want to really sort of smooth that out, if you're really getting some of these artifacting from remove grain, you might want to manipulate this and sort of work with this. But the quickest way, the way that's going to work for 95% of things, is if you just turn this on, go to 0.97, and it should smooth out the footage quite well. 
So now if we play this back, you'll notice how long it's taking to load right here. Let's turn off the audio for a second. You'll notice how long it's taking to load. And that is because of the processor power it's going to basically draw from uh, smoothing out this image. So I'm going to let this load and we're going to take a look at this. All right, so we have a pretty good load right here. Uh, let's look at that same area as we did before. And if we click play back on here, you're going to see it's a lot smoother than it once was. There is a whole lot less uh, grain happening. There's still, like I said, a little bit of flickering happening around the edges due to the grain, but it isn't as intense. It isn't as uh, noticeable as here. You can already see it's a whole lot more color artifacting in these edges. Um, so yeah, that's something that really this helps with. You can also fine tune just a little bit of the settings in here as well. If you want to go into these two options, noise reduction and fine tuning, uh, noise reduction, this is basically just the amount of noise it's reducing. And this is how many passes, how many times it's smoothing it out. If you bring this up, it's going to smooth it out more and more. And that's going to get you closer to those sort of pastel looking colors. Um, if it's sort of a non motiony shot, there's not a lot of stuff happening, you can increase this a lot and it won't look very bad. But if you have a lot of motion going on, and you increase this a lot, you will start getting Getting a lot of artifacting. So you can reduce this or increase this depending on your shot. Same with the noise reduction. And you can also go down here into blend with original. This is really nice because it allows you to blend it back a little bit with the original, giving some of that detail maybe that was lost when you reduce this and sort of having a, uh, a, a slider of, you know, no grain, no grain, loss of detail, and then grain, and it still has detail. And you can find out where in the middle you like that to sit. So for example, if we went to right here, we have a lot of reduction in grain, but if we want to blend this back with the original sum, maybe like 51%, we can get a little bit of the best of both worlds. We, we get a little bit more detail on the edges, but we also get a little bit more grain back. If we bring this up to 100%, it's just basically going to be like we turn the effect off. Um, you're going to still have, so like, now there is going to be I guess it's not going to be exactly like you turn it off. There's still going to be some math involved of how it's blending together. However, it will be a lot closer to the original than if you keep this at 0%. So just something to keep in mind, you have more options down here. But that is the fastest way to reduce grain in After Effects without using any plugins. It has a great um, effect built in, drag and drop, turn on that temporal filtering and bring that up a little bit or keep it right there if it looks good at 0.9. Uh, if you just mess around with these settings a little bit, you should be able to get a shot that is pretty clear and pretty good to go. And now once we are done with our effect, we don't have to touch this at all. We don't have to do anything. Probably want to save it, control S or file save. And then now if we go back into Premiere Pro, drop this down, it will have updated back here and we can continue on our editing as we want. Note, the load times will be really, really slow over here as well. It'll try to load it, but you'll notice that it'll freeze every once in a while. And that's just sort of the caveat of sending it to After Effects. However, we won't lose any um, of our video because we haven't rendered it out yet. So it's just going to link it in here. And then when we render it, it'll actually grab it from After Effects. And we'll only do one render instead of if we actually rendered it here, send it to After Effects, rendered it out, send it back, which would have two additionals. So best way to sort of keep all of this together, use both the programs and reduce our grain. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make a video every other day on Adobe related products. And until next time guys, see ya.